Hello everybody, my name is Matthew. I'm the General Manager of Holiday Coach and Auto Sales, and this is... Nigel, I'm the Assistant to the General Manager, and I'm in Sales and Delivery. And today, we're bringing you another video in our series of how to shop for a coach and things to do when you're looking to buy a coach. Again, this video is just an informational video. It's not an end-all, be-all. It may be missing some things, and if it is, feel free to comment below, so that way we can know to put those in the video at a later date or reshoot the entire video later to make sure that we include everything. But again, this is just what Nigel and I do when we're taking a coach in on trade or purchasing a coach for the dealership. It's things that you should be thinking about doing whenever you're looking at purchasing a coach as well. So come on, join us in for a pre-trip inspection or a pre-purchase inspection as well. All right, everybody, come join us on a pre-purchase inspection. Again, this is not to give a warranty or anything to say that Nigel and I know everything, but this is what we do when we take a coach in on trade or purchase it for the dealership. So first, after you get the introduction out of the way, it's time to check out the motor coach. What you want to do on the first impression of the coach is do a quick exterior walk around. During this walk around, you're not so much looking for every dent, ding, nick, or anything like that. It's depending on the coach age. Some of that's to be expected. These coaches can have upwards of a million miles on them. As well, this particular coach is a 2003 model, so it's 20 years old, and it does have a million miles on it. Unfor unfortunately, this coach here just got back from the paint shop, so it's going to be in above average condition. But even still, it's not perfect. There may be a couple of dents and dings and scratches. This is an eight thousand. This is about an eight to ten thousand dollar paint job. To get a perfection paint job, you're probably going to be looking at ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Most coaches, again, won't be in this good of shape because most coaches, when they're resold, don't come with a brand new paint job. So we're not telling you that the coach should be all scuffed up and everything, but we are telling you to expect some minor dents, dings, and scratches, unlike on an automobile purchase. But again, what you want to look for is major body damage. Make sure that the coach hasn't swung into another vehicle or had a stop sign drug down the entire length of the coach. Also, check for frame damage. Make sure the coach hasn't been bottomed out. The best way to do this is to open up the bay doors. Once you've got the bay doors open, take a peek inside. Make sure all the structure railing and everything is straight. Make sure the bottom rail hasn't been dented in or dented up. Make sure that if it's a northern coach, make sure that there's no rust. If it is a northern coach, rust isn't an end-all be-all. These coaches are built to withstand that, but you just want to know how much rust. And we'll get to the underbody here in a little bit shorter of the video. Same thing here. The back of the coach is even more important to make sure that it hasn't been bottomed out. That's the most common point where a coach is going to be bottomed out. Again, what you're looking at is this frame rail right here and all the way through to make sure that it's straight and flows evenly. Then as you come back to the rear of the coach, you're looking at the wheels, making sure everything looks good there. Make sure that you're, these are just lug nut covers, so that's not a problem at all if one's missing. What you want to make sure is the lug nuts are there. Coming back here is another big focal point is the rear of the coach. These corners right here are called swing points. That's going to be your most common damage on a motor coach. Make sure that everything looks good here. As well, the exact rear of the coach is going to be another good sign to see about the mechanical health of the coach. If it's just been washed, it'll be a whole lot harder to tell. But if it hasn't just been washed, how much black is on the back of the coach? Some black is expected, as these are diesel vehicles, and they're not exactly the cleanest. But what you want to make sure is that it's not caked on black. As caked on black could mean an oil, an oil leak problem or a, a diesel exhaust problem that you may want to check into further. Continuing around the coach. You're still looking for the major body damage. Again, not every dent, ding, and scratch, but major body damage. Another thing to do, depending on how cloudy or how sunny it is, is the windows. But we'll get to those further on the inside. But on the exterior, you're looking for scuffs, scratches, things that may be compromising the glass integrity. Inside, you'll be looking to see if they're foggy or not. And I'm going to pass it off to Nigel now where he's going to do a more in-depth inspection of the coach. It's kind of called a pre-trip inspection whenever you're going on a charter, but today we're going to call it the pre-purchase inspection because a lot of that is crossover. All right, just like Matthew said, we're going to do a pre-trip inspection. So what I'm going to do is going to turn on all of your lights, headlights and hazard lights. So since I'm right here at the left corner of the coach, I want to make sure that this mirror is properly secured, that the mirror itself is not cracked or broken. Once again, this is a 20-year-old coach. So yes, it is an electric mirror, but it may not adjust with the button on the inside. That is okay. You're just mainly checking to make sure that the mirrors are not cracked. Same thing with the windshield, top to bottom, no cracks. Up top, your clearance lights, making sure that they are all illuminated. Your windshield wipers, especially with the lower ones, there are these little clips that hold the wipers in place, or wiper blades in place, to make sure they are intact. Also, just drag your finger along the wiper 
to make sure it's not missing any of the rubber. Coming down a little bit, turn signals, low beams. I want to go back in, hit the high beams. I can do that. Make sure those are working. If your coach comes with fog lights, which this coach does not, they will be down there. You can turn those on as well. One thing about older coaches, really any coach, after it's been sitting for a while, you may notice that the coach may lean a little bit. That is normal. It doesn't mean that there's a problem. So if, it's, if you get to the coach and it's leaning to the left or to the right, that's okay. Continuing on. And while we're up here at the front, we can take a look underneath the front of the coach. Just check for rust. Once again, mirror is properly secured. Mirror is not cracked. Once again, it is okay if it does not adjust from the inside. With your tire, front tires, no less than 430 seconds of tread depth. Make sure the tire wall is not damaged. There's no bulges. The rim, make sure it's properly seated to the tire. Cracks, make sure there's no cracks, no illegal third-party aftermarket welds. Lug nuts, make sure they're all secured. Once again, like Matthew stated, these are just covers, so you can take them off. Make sure all the lug nuts are secured. Hub seal, make sure it's at the proper level and it's not leaking. And most importantly, make sure that the tire is, is not leaking any air. Coming on the inside, once again, make sure there's no obvious damage. Over in here, you will have your triangles. Make sure you have at least three of them for DOT purposes. Coming down, the rear of the coach, back tires, no less than 230 seconds. Make sure your tire pressure is good. Don't forget to check your inside dual. While you're in there, check your airbag. Also, listen for any leaks. Once again, tire wall, no damage, no bulges. Rim is not cracked, no illegal third-party aftermarket welds. Axle seal is not leaking. Lug nuts are all secure. And same thing with your tag axle. And on some coaches, like the Prevo, the axle actually, the tag axle actually comes off of the ground. So make sure that A, it comes off the ground, and B, there's no audible leaks. For your tag tire, it's the exact same thing. Tire tread, tire pressure, tire wall, looking up there, making sure your airbag is good. For this purpose, we will go up to the front to look at that airbag since it's very hard to see in the rear. Make sure there's no cuts, no leaks. Once again, if the coach hasn't been started, the airbags will most likely be deflated. So make sure the airbags and the coach is properly aired up to be able to check your airbags. While I'm sitting here, inspecting all of my windows, make sure none of the windows are bulging out, the seals are not bulging out. Check my lights up top, in the back, in the front, all my daytime running lights, as well as my turn signals. All of them are flashing. Now coming back here to the battery box. Check your batteries. Make sure everything's properly secured. Sometimes there will be a cover here. You have to remove the cover to be able to see the batteries. And also check date codes, which on this one is not present, but usually there's a sticker on top of the battery. Coming back here, make sure your air filter housing is properly secured. Opening up the rear of the coach. Check all your lights. Make sure they're functioning properly. As we can see on this coach, the top right light is out. So that is something you will want to bring up to your salesman. Coming back down. Coolant is over here. Sight glass is over here. Make sure it's at the proper level. On some coaches, you have, the coach has to be on flat ground in order for you to get a proper level. Radiator, all the fan blades are intact, not cracked or missing. All my belts look to be in good shape. On some Prevo, actually on all uh, older Prevos, the belts are air tension. So when you get to the coach, they may be flappy like this, and that is okay. Just make sure they're all there and accounted for. Also check the condition, make sure there's no cracks or any grooves missing. You have your oil. Oil dipstick is here. 
transmission dipstick is here. Fan drive gearbox all is here. Look underneath the coach. Make sure there's no audible, not audible, I'm sorry, visual leaks. Once again, this is a diesel engine. A little oil is to be expected. We just make sure it's not excessive. We can check our AC compressor, make sure it's not leaking any oil. Also, you can start the coach from the rear. For the sake of the video, we're not going to do it right now because it's extremely loud. And coming over to the left side of the coach, checking your radiator. Make sure there's no crazy at normal damage. A little damage is okay. Uh, this bus has been on the road for 20 years, has over a million miles on it. So rock chips and stuff like that are to be expected. For the sake of the video, on the left side is the exact same thing as what you're going to check on the right. Once again, windows are intact, not cracked, missing. When we get on the inside, we're going to look and make sure that they're not foggy. Checking your lights up top. The lenses are there, not cracked or missing, and they are illuminated. Turn signals are illuminating. Running lights are all illuminated. Tires. The dual tires in the back, as well as your tag axle, no less than 230 seconds of tread depth. You're checking the, checking the tire pressure. You're checking the side wall, make sure no bulges, no cracks. The rim, make sure that it's not cracked, no illegal third-party aftermarket welds. I do know if we come in a little closer... There can be dirt on some of the rims and it makes it look like, especially right here, it makes it look like it's a crack. But if you just take your finger, you realize it's just dirt. The rim, not crack, missing or damaged. No third party, illegal mark, aftermarket welts. Hub seal, axle seal is not leaking. All the lug nuts are secure. Once again, some coaches like this one will have the lug nut covers. So take them off and make sure that they are properly torqued down. Or you can just get a torque wrench, that too. Alrighty, now let's go on and walk back up to the front. Like I said, everything on the left side is exactly what you checked on the right, so just repeat that. Matter of fact, that's a lie. Forgot one crucial part right here. If you open this door right here, underneath this panel, it's going to be all your fuses and relays. This is a, a known place for you to hear air leaks, especially from your driver's seat. So just stick your head in there, listen for any air leaks. One important thing, this little red knob right here. This will release all the air pressure on your service door just in case that button decides to fail and you're not able to release the air pressure from the inside. Spare tire release is right here. You can look in there and make sure that the spare tire is there as well as your windshield upper fluid. On our coaches, we put our DOT inspection sticker here, so make sure that it's valid. It may not be within the last 30 days, but it will be within the last year. Once again, check that sticker right there. Now coming back on the right side, before we go in, I wanna open up the AC condenser to show you that real quick. There we go. So if we look in there, make sure it's not crack, damaged, Little rock chips, that's okay. Once again, this is a 20 year old coach with over a million miles. We just make sure that it's not super dented in. And also, whenever you get on the inside of the coach, fire it up, turn on the AC, make sure it's working properly. All right, now coming on the inside of the coach, make sure your handrails are nice and secure. Sitting down, once again, this is gonna be a pre trip inspection. Now, taking a look at the dash controls on some coaches the buttons will be worn to where you can't see any of the labels. So definitely make sure you ask your salesman what every button does. This is a Prevo H345 2003 model. So some of the buttons may look different depending on which model and year you have. So just make sure that your headlights work, your hazard lights work. If your coach has upper wipers, make sure they work. Test your upper washers. They're functioning. This coach has an upper defroster. Make sure that's operational. This coach has sun visors. Make sure both sides work. Once again, this is a 20 year old coach, so if it does not work, that is okay. This coach comes with a kneeler. Sometimes you have to make sure that the door is closed before the kneeler will work. So test that out now. Not only make sure that the coach goes down, make sure it goes back up which it does, and the light goes off on the dash. Mirror heat, this button allows you to turn on all your lights on your dash to make sure no lights are burnt out. And this would also be a great time to ask your salesman what all these lights mean. 
fast idle. Here is your engine brake. You can test that out during your um, test drive. Engine override. Some coaches will have luggage bay locks, so test that here. Coming to your gauges, right here is your water temperature. Make sure it's no higher than 212. 212 is boiling, so make sure it's in the normal range, which is anywhere between 170 and really 200, give or take. This is your boost pressure. You will see this go up as you are driving down the road and pulling a load. Oil pressure, make sure you have oil pressure. Make sure it's not at zero. Tegometer, speedometer, really important. The odometer can be replaced or it can roll over. So if you have a coach and it's advertised as low miles, make sure you have that backed up with maintenance records. Your volts over here. Anywhere between 26 and 28 is normal operating range. They have fuel, front, rear, and accessory air pressure. The air should cut in right around 90 to 100 PSI, and it should cut out right around 120, 125, give or take. You want to test your entrance door. Make sure it opens and closes. Driver's light, interior lights, reading lights, overhead fans, and your driver, driver notification button. We will test the PA and the radio and HVAC a little later. Over here, you have your shift pad. Make sure the coach goes into neutral, drive, and reverse. Cruise, you'll test that out whenever you're driving. Your driver's window, make sure that operates. Once again, 20-year-old coach, so even though it does have mirror controls here, it may not function, and that is okay. Tag axle here, make sure the tag axle comes up and goes down. Parking brake. Make sure to secure it, not loose. Steering wheel, make sure the steering is not loose. You want to check the turn signals, make sure they're operating on both sides. Test your horns. And now we're going to perform the air brake inspection. You want to make sure your air pressure is all the way up at 125 PSI. We want to turn off fast idle, turn off your headlights. Turn off all your lights and HVAC. Turn the key off and turn it one click to the right. You want to put your foot on the service brake and release your parking brake. Once the gauges have stabilized, you don't want to lose no less than three PSI in one minute. For the sake of the video, we're going to assume that a minute has passed. We're going to start pumping the brakes. Right around 60 PSI, you should see your warning indicators come on for your low air pressure. On some coaches, the engine has to be running for the buzzer to sound. So I'm going to keep pumping my brakes. And right around 30 PSI, my spring brake should pop out like it has. I'm going to push it in, make sure that it doesn't stick. I'm going to go in and fire my coach back up. You can hear the low air warning buzzer going off. While I have my foot on the brake, parking brake is set. I want to put it in drive. I want to go forward a little bit and I'm going to hit the brakes. And what I'm making sure of is that the coach didn't go to the left or to the right and it didn't shake whenever I hit the parking brake or hit the service brake. Seat belt. It's not cut or frayed, it latches properly. Some coaches will have armrests. Make sure that those are working properly. With some coaches, the seat, the driver's seat will be air operated. If it's not, that's okay. If it is air operated, but it's not going up, once again, that is okay. Once again, these coaches are not gonna be brand new. All right, and now that Nigel's done the, the front of the coach, let's do the interior of the coach. So the things to look at at the interior of the coach is things like the seats. This coach here has 56 seats, so we're not gonna look at each individual seat. What you're looking for is the cloth to make sure that there's no rips or tears. If there are, the good thing about cloth is you can stitch the cloth, repair it very easily. If it's leather, you're looking for leather wear, stuff like that, it can easily be as repaired, so you wanna check it a little more. And if that's important to you, kinda of take that into the valuation of the price. Another thing to look at is the power outlets. Power outlets can be in many different places on coaches. For this coach, they're all at the floorboard. Sometimes they could be on the wall here, or they could be at the seats, behind the seats, many different locations. 
They can also be wall outlets like this coach has, or even USB outlets, and some combination of those. Another thing to look at is the overhead bins. Some have faces like this, some of them are faceless. Depending on what's important to you, make sure that they work. Sometimes these shocks can wear out, but that's okay. Those are pretty cheap and easy to replace, but it's just something to think about when looking at the coach and inspecting. Another thing to think about is the lights. Come over here, check that the reading lights work. Sometimes you'll need to push a button at the front. So if they don't work at first, just ask your salesperson to make sure that they're turned on. Another thing is the air. The air blown out here is just that, recirculated air. On this coach, anyways, other coaches may be different, but if you don't feel the cold air coming out here as cold as you'd like it, go over to the window seal. That's where more than likely the colder air is going to be coming out at. As well as the heat, check that as well. Now, if this coach was just started and parked in a parking lot, it could take upwards of 15 to 30 minutes to really start feeling that full effect of the cold and hot air. You may feel it there, but if the coach is baking at over 100 degrees, it's not going to feel cold for quite some time. As we walk through the coach, what you want to look for, and in this video, unfortunately, due to copyright issues, we can't test the sound system or the video system accurately, but we're going to do the best that we can. We're going to assume that the sound is playing and that it's uniform throughout the entire coach. Another thing is the TVs. You want to make sure that all of the TVs are showing a picture. Some of them will have something like this DVD player here, or some of them will simply say REI or just show some form of color, but you do want to check that they're all functioning. Another thing, full-size coaches, most are equipped with a restroom. You want to check that the restroom is neat and tidy and as well looks functional. And then coming back down through the coach, again, you're just checking the TVs that they are all functional. Everything looks like a clear picture. Checking the overhead bins. May want to spot check a few of them just to make sure. Here's that blower that I was telling you about. That is just recirculating the cabin air and putting it out right here. As we come up to the front of the coach, most of your tour groups are going to love to have these microphones. So test to make sure that that works. Again, if it doesn't work at first glance, there may be a button that your salesperson will need to push, but you can definitely check that. Usually in the front of the coach will be your DVD player, where this one is equipped with a DVD player, the PA system, as well as the VCR. And this has a switch box if it has dual. Check the DVD player. One other thing to look at through the back of the coach is to make sure that all the lights are illuminated. Some coaches will have them where this one does, above the overhead bins. Others will have it throughout the middle of the aisle. Depends on which coach there is. After you check the lights, another thing to check is the emergency hatches. Make sure that everything seems secure. If you want to test it out, you can for the sake of this video or not, but also check around it. Make sure that it's not wet. These are common leak points. As you can see, this one's had a past leak. That's okay. It's already been repaired. I can clearly see that it's not wet. But it's just something to take into account, especially if there's been a dry spell. You can always ask them to do water. But again, this is not a big deal to replace. These are actually quite cheap and easy to replace. Another thing to look at is the emergency exits. On some coaches, every window is an emergency exit. On other coaches, it's every other window. Don't feel like you've got to test those. But if you want to, you can pop the bracket up and push the window out. But please ask your salesperson to give you a help if you've never done it before to make sure that the window doesn't fall all the way out because that can happen. All right. And today we've gone over the pre-purchase inspection, going on around the outside, going through the inside, going through the driver controls, and then done a deep dive into the video. The one thing that we want to cover, not really on its own video, is it won't be long enough, but just know that once you've done the inspection, make sure that it was done thoroughly, accurately, and the way that you wanted it done. If you're not comfortable with doing it yourself, that's okay to admit. Not everybody can inspect a, a motor coach and do it adequately. So if you feel uncomfortable, let your salesperson know that, hey, can we drop by the shop, maybe talk to one of your mechanics. Another great thing to do is to get an unbiased third-party inspection. Your salesperson should be able to assist with this. We do. Nigel and I recommend third-party inspections. We're happy to help you find a third-party inspection company that's not related to us or the company that you're buying from that will help you do an unbiased third-party inspection, basically like what we just did. But they will do it more thorough, more in-depth, and they'll have knowledge if there's an issue that you may miss. Another thing to note is that whenever you purchase a motor coach, and it's usually as is, even if the seller's trying to slyly put in there that they're going to warrant you getting home, or that they're going to warranty it for a certain period of time, unless that's in writing, it's absolutely meaningless. As well, even if it is in writing, it may be hard to enforce if it's done for a private party, or even a dealer sell sometimes can be a little questionable, even when it's in writing, unless you get it on a buyer's order, or on the bill of sale, or on a legal binding document that both you and the seller sign. I would even have it notarized. So unless you get a third party warranty, which those can be expensive, so if you're purchasing that 20-year-old unit, it may not be worth doing. 
you're looking at probably around $10,000 for one year in unlimited miles, or almost $30,000. It's a little under that for three years in unlimited miles. So as you see, that can add up really quickly. It may be worth it, it may not. If it is, talk to a licensed dealer to talk about that warranty. Nigel and I'll be glad to assist with that. And on that note, any issues that you find during your pre-purchase inspection, bring it to your salesperson's attention. Ask if they can take it up to their shop or take it somewhere and get it fixed before signing the documents, paying and leaving. As once you sign the documents, pay and leave, it may be harder to get them to honor what they said they would do. So go ahead and get that done. Or simply, if they don't have time to do it that day, some shops won't, ask for a negotiated part, part on the price. If you know that, get a quote from their shop or a third party shop and ask to negotiate that into the deal. And on that note, finishing up the warranty discussion, there are some exceptions to what we're talking about. Those things could be like warranties on rebuilt parts, such as your engine, transmission, other aftermarket parts that have rebuilt that have been recent. Usually rebuilds, engine replacement slash rebuilds, we'll call them rebuilds, but they could be remand engines, crate engines, whatever it may be. Usually those will carry a warranty. Usually those are transferable, but you should confirm to make sure that they are. Um, usually you'll get a one-year warranty, sometimes a two-year warranty. Usually it's unlimited miles. Um, but usually that's going to be a very valuable warranty if it is transferable, so long as you can get it repaired at any shop. Say if the shop in North Carolina repairs it and you're in California, it may not be of any value. So that is something to confirm and check. But you should get the paperwork. Call before you go if it's important. Go ahead and confirm with the shop. They'll be able to tell you the date it was installed and the date that the warranty is going to be extended to. An engine replacement is usually going to run you around thirty dollars to $40,000. A transmission replacement will usually run fifteen dollars to $20,000. So as you see, those costs can really add up and a warranty would be great. Now, are you going to need the warranty? That's the question. You know, usually these engines, the Detroit Series 60 is rated at about a million miles with a, you know, overhauls in between, not rebuilds, but, you know, mainly overhauls. So you're probably not going to need that warranty, but if it's there, it will create significant value in the sale. A, a recent engine and transmission replacement will add a significant value to the coach with a warranty or without. Um, so as we wrap it up, those are just things to think about. Every coach, as we've discussed, though, unless you have some kind of transferable warranty that you've confirmed, you should assume that every coach is sold as is, whereas with no warranties, whether expressed or implied, being if you're buying it from a private party, a dealer, a broker, it doesn't matter who you buy it from. The warranties are as is on used coaches like any other used vehicle in the country, unless you have a buyer's guide that states that there's an, a warranty or some kind of legal binding document that will be enforced. So hopefully this has answered your questions about post-purchase, if things are covered, if things are not. And we just want to make sure that everything's straightforward. Whether you purchase from us or anybody else, it usually doesn't make a difference. It's all going to be the same. And hopefully this helps answer some questions and concerns. Well, thank you so much for taking this tour with us. We hope it helped you out and gave you some great information. We thank you for joining us. Like, subscribe, and comment for the future in the series. This is just the second video of many to come, and we hope that they're educational. And thanks for hanging around this far. Comment below. Let Nigel and I know if we're doing a good job or not, or things that we can maybe include in the future videos that you'd like to see. Thank you so much. Signing off for Matthew and Nigel.